2017 12.9 inch iPad Pro in 2018. Is it worth it? Let's find out in this video. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and I picked up a 2017 iPad Pro 12.9 just over 24 hours ago and I want to share with you iPad Pro 2017 and 2018 talk about maybe if it's worth it this this iPad is basically the same one as I reviewed earlier this year the 10.5 but so the experience is identical to that one now I posted on Instagram a picture of this and some people were saying that 120 Hertz that's on the older or only on the 10.5 actually this has that as well the 12.9 let's begin by talking about some of the key specifications with this iPad. Okay, so the first spec is that 12.9 inch display. So here it is. Let me go ahead and flip the iPad around here. You can see this thing. It is a monster. One of the most beautiful pieces of hardware Apple does make, but it is a monster. It's like holding a MacBook screen without the keyboard attached to it in your hand. Now you can get the smart keyboard. I didn't go with it because I don't use an iPad like that. I like to use it just for the touch screen only, but I might invest in a keyboard later, but Probably not. So the first thing is the 12.9 inch display. That's 2732 by 2048 pixels resolution. Now what that translates to is retina display. It's true tone. It, that's a first two for this iPad, True Tone. It's ProMotion, meaning 120 hertz refresh. It also can refresh at 48 hertz and 24. So depending on what you're doing on the screen, it can refresh at different rates, but it does look very smooth overall. But taking a look at an iPhone 8 Plus inside the body of this thing, I mean, just look at that size. It is just massive. And it's actually a 25% larger screen than the one on the 9.7. Now, in terms of the 10.5, that's probably like a 15% difference here. But in reality, this thing feels like it's 50% larger than the smaller tablets just because the bezels are still not as thin as we probably want to see. And I know that the 12.9 is probably going to be updated with an all screen design. If it does, I probably will trade this one in, get that one or just get that one as well to review here on the channel. Second up is the 12 megapixel 2160p camera on the rear. Now that right there, guys, is an Apple iPhone 7 camera. So some might question like, really, why do we need that kind of camera quality on a tablet? I'm never gonna use a tablet like that. Well, you know, you could actually get a tablet stand and use this as a camera if you wanted to for your YouTube channel or whatever, and then go ahead and edit movies right on iMovie. And then we have four gigabytes of RAM with an Apple A10X Fusion chip. So the power in this thing is absolutely redonkulous. This thing is a beast under the hood. So if you guys want an iPad and you don't wanna get a MacBook, you need the power, this is your boy right here. The four gigs of RAM puts it ahead of all the other iPads in terms of power. But you can see, I don't know if it's translating on camera, but you can just see how smooth that display really is. It's just liquid here on that ProMotion technology. And definitely something I would like to see going forward for the future you know, of the iPhone series. So let's take a look at the iPhone X versus this guy right here. And you can see just what a massive difference here. It's just super large. Now let's get into the next thing, which we're gonna talk about is the build quality and the weight. Okay, so in terms of the weight, it's definitely not heavy. It's about one and a half pounds here. So very light in comparison to a full blown five pound laptop, maybe a three pound laptop. If you got a MacBook, this thing is like half the weight of that. And when I first took it out of the box, I was not struck by how heavy it was. I didn't even think that didn't even cross my mind. But what did cross my mind is how wide this tablet is. It's very, very wide. And if you're used to just typing away on a smaller iPad, it's a reach. You can see it's just a reach here. On here now I know that you can split the keyboard side by side but this is just really big you can go ahead and put on the zoom view here if you go on display settings and then we go to view and then we go to zoom view you can knock on zoom view if you guys want to have if you have bad eyes or whatever or you want to have a larger keyboard you can do that but then everything looks kind of too jumbo and blown up I just don't really like this view personally I like to see the full you know screen here on the standard view so you can do that but like I say tall so I wasn't used to having to go all the way up here to pull stuff down on my old iPad it was not that much of a stretch on 9.7 
But this thing over here in terms of build quality is just beautiful. It looks pretty much classic Apple iPhone since the iPhone 6 and the iPad, you know, that, that classic design here. But seeing it this large is just something to lay your eyes upon. You do have a headphone jack here on the iPad. You have four channel speakers, which is awesome to see here. Lightning port, but one annoying thing is Apple did not go ahead and include a fast charger in the box. And for the kind of money you're paying for this tablet, they could have went ahead and did that at least. But yeah, overall, in terms of build quality, it's great. You know, you're going to like it. You're going to like the aluminum build. It feels premium. There's nothing really to say much about that. Just keep in mind, it's a little bit wide and very tall. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that display. Now, that display definitely gets very bright. It's one of the brightest. Actually, this is the brightest iPad of all time. It gets up to around 600 nits, which is even brighter than the iMac 27 inch. So, if you want a really bright iPad, this is your boy right here. 76.4% screen to body ratio. So, we got to get that up in future designs, Apple. But I think they're going to go ahead and do that in the upcoming iPads. We should see that come when they do this again i don't think they're going to do the same design one more time 265 pixels per inch now what does that mean for an ipad your viewing distance is usually pretty far away so you're not going to be pixel peeping but if you are the text is sharp no matter where you look at it. it's very sharp good viewing angles on this ips technology i'm trying to bend the ipad here you can see colors don't shift hard at all you can definitely maintain the quality no matter how you do lay your eyes upon this ipad so it is a beautiful display to use hands down it's in the four by three aspect ratio and it has up to 16 million colors it also has a scratch resistant display with oleophobic coating which does wear off over the lifespan of using it so get a screen protector if you don't want that to wear off and a new thing for the ipad on the display is the true tone so under the brightness you can see true tone so that's a cool thing there as well so under software here for this ipad we are running ios 11.2.2 out of the box but it is going to be updated to all the future versions i did get the 64 gigabyte version and it runs smooth i mean especially with that promotion display it's it's fantastic you have the ipad experience with the new dock at the bottom which is really how i love to use ios 11 is under the iPad experience. It's better to use the iPad than the iPhone, I think, on the iOS 11s. So this is the iPad or this is the tablet I think offers probably the best software experience for a tablet. Now, Surface users out there, if you're watching this, I know you're going to say your tablet's more productive. But what I mean is as a tablet, this is king right here. Now, Surface is king of productivity, using it like a computer. This one is much lightweight compared to that. The programs aren't as powerful. However, I think that if you're buying a tablet for tablet functionality and trying to get some work done, this can get a lot of work done if you live within mobile applications. Okay, so how does it perform? I'm not going to talk too much about this because we know iOS devices in 2018 all perform very well. Even the iPad mini 4 still performs well and that needs an update if you ask me. So this thing overall, very good performer. And again, I just have to mention the ProMotion. That's really the new thing here with the 120 hertz display. It makes this phone or this phone, this tablet feel faster than it really is. And it's ridiculous. Go ahead, go ahead. I know some smart Alec is going to come in the comments and say, oh, you can't run Mac OS on that chipset. It's not designed for the Mac OSs. I understand that. All I'm trying to make the analogy is that this thing is absurdly powerful. Okay, so let's get on to the cameras now. So <laughs> it's an iPhone 7 camera. Done. No, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. It's very clear, very sharp. You do have the flash here. You have the HDR, live photos is on board. It's really nice to have this huge viewfinder to go ahead and see everything. Like, let me take a picture of this keyboard right here. And you can see the level of detail for an iPad is ridiculous. I mean, I mean, if you wanted to use this as a picture taker on a vacation, you just take your iPad and you just are gonna do some work on it and you don't wanna bring a camera and your phone doesn't have a great camera, which I don't know why it would. Most camera phones are great these days. And if you don't mind looking a little bit absurd with this big old tablet taking pictures, 
it's going to be great quality. I mean, look at the LG. Look at the, I mean, just look at these details in here. So, of course, it's still like a camera from a phone. So, you still get noise. It's not professional grade. But most people could actually snap a shot with this, throw it on their website. And nobody would care much at all about that. It, it looks that good. So, great camera on here. It doesn't have the telephoto camera like the 7 Plus. But again, they probably already gave you more than you were asking for with the camera here for this iPad. And they probably will continue to do this because people, I think, like having a great camera on their iPad. It goes with the iPad Pro moniker. In addition to that, they are providing you with a flash there on the rear, something that the Pro series did start to introduce to the iPad. Okay, so the audio is absolutely bonkers on here when it comes to how loud it gets. You're going to hear it in a second. So loud. Let's go to the beginning. Here, just very bassy, very rich, just a very great speaker. You do feel it like it's so loud that you actually feel it like pounding in the back of the iPad. Like the iPad is so thin, razor thin over here that you can actually feel it going. So what about storage? So this is 64 gig and with the new file setup that they did with the iOS 11, where it doesn't actually consume as much space as prior editions of iOS, this is actually plenty enough storage, I think, on 64 gigs. Most people should be fine. Now, if you are going to use this thing as a MacBook replacement, you do want to get the 256 gigs. And if you're planning on using this as your only computer, like no iMac, no MacBook, no other laptop, just straight up iPad usage all day, every day, I would recommend the 512 gigabyte. But other than that, 64 should be good enough for most users. And the storage is actually pretty fast as well in terms of transfer speeds. So another thing that's going to be great with this tablet is the Apple Pencil. Now, I don't have it right here. It's in the drawer over there, but it's actually more accurate to write on this tablet with the Apple Pencil. It's The latency is a lot better than prior, a prior edition. So graphic designers have a large, large canvas here to do their work, to do their artwork, to draw, to design. This is going to be a great tablet for that. And you got photo apps like Affinity Photo that are really good for stuff like that, as well as, you know, this thing right here, this Autodesk, which is a free app sketchbook and you could do Lightroom CC on here I mean this is a great tablet for using the Apple Pencil with over the other editions I think probably the best that Apple does offer so that's it for me on this iPad 12.9 2017 and 2018 this was an initial review of the product if you guys want to see a more in-depth review of this one go ahead and drop it down below personally I think that this tablet does have a premium price tag it starts at around 799 bucks and goes up to around a thousand with all the accessories even the base model will push you over a thousand dollars meaning you get the smart keyboard you get a case you get a screen protector even the 64 gig is over a grand you go ahead and buy the 512 gig you're looking around 1500 with all the accessories taxes and all that stuff so this is a premium tablet that requires a premium user but some people might just want to buy this for that big canvas and just have another their little tv in their hand or whatever so i really just traded my 9.7 pro because i've had it for about two years i wanted the pro motion display here and i do use the apple pencil to draw and stuff like that to write notes down so i think i can make this thing worth the price for me but i don't know if everyone else can so to me it's a mixed bag if it's still worth it here in 2018 there is a rumored 12.9 coming so if you're really interested i i would suggest you might want to wait for me, I just picked it up because I might pick that one up as well, but not everybody's going to be doing that. So if you're going to invest, like you're thinking about one tablet for the future, you might want to just wait just a couple months on that because they might introduce an all new design. But if there's no new design introduced after like late March, early April, or even latest June, then I would definitely just go with this one. If you absolutely are requiring the best of the best you can get when it comes to a tablet, I think this one takes the crown even over the 10.5 because of the four gigabytes of RAM because of it being so large. I mean, if you're going to pay top dollar for an iPad, why not go all out on this one? You guys found this video helpful, enjoyable. Do me a favor, click that like button for me. Any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, video suggestions down below in the comments. Nick here helping you to master your technology. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more. I will catch you all in the next one. 
and peace. 